everybody. We're going to be making uh, wrap wallets. So we've made up a pattern pack. We have a vertical and a horizontal layout. I have a couple finished over here actually. So this is the vertical. We have a pocket on either side and a pocket in the middle. And then the horizontal is they have the same footprint. Uh, this one's just oriented horizontally. So we're going to make the vertical one in this video. And I have some Newbury Leathers South Street Tannage here, which is basically like a chrome Excel type leather. Um, and we're going to be using this burgundy, and I, I forget the name of this color, but it's the saddle tanny color. And we'll get to cutting out this pattern here. Um, if you'd like to follow along, the pattern will be in the description. It's going to be four bucks, and we'll get into it. So once you get this piece cut out, um, there's going to be a, little, a couple little slots that you have to cut. So I'm going to go over to the cutting board here. I'm using a hole punch. This is a 530 seconds hole punch. Um, but anything close to this will work. You can punch the holes that are in the pattern first. And then it's much easier that way to just cut these slots freehand or with a ruler. So we have our two pieces cut out, and like any wrap wallet, we're going to wrap one around the other. Um, there are two different wrap wallet designs usually. You have one where both pieces wrap around the same side, and you have the other where one wraps around the other, kind of the opposite sides. And you can put this together both ways, but I designed it so that you fold one, fold the other, and kind of join them together like this. So you have a spine on one side and a spine on the other. Now if you want to... You can, of course, put them together like that, but you will have to trim this down. So, you see, you can see here, I dyed and burnished the outside edge of the front pocket section because we're not gonna be able to reach that once we're sewn in. The next step is to get this glued up and then we'll do the same thing when this is sanded down and, and we'll burnish it as well. So you wanna glue around the bottom edge, which is the edge that has the small slot in it, and then up to about where um, this slot ends, but you can check it on here, and you can also just break that part open with your bone folder if you glue too far. So we're just going to stick this down. And we'll be wrapping this part, so this is going to wrap around here, so we'll break this open again actually, this side. Um, once we have everything sewn together so that cards fit nicely. This is just kind of a temporary solution um, so that we can get everything dyed up and ready to go. So when we take our beveler out for the center piece before we glue it all up, we really only need to bevel from here around, but I'm going to go a little extra so when you look into the wallet, if you ever look into the wallet, um, you'll see a nice little finished edge down to where it's probably too dark to see. So we'll bevel first, we'll do a little bit more sanding, and then I'm just going to throw a little coat of edge dye on here and then use some token all the burnish since this is a chrome tan leather, and then we'll be ready to start gluing up and stitching. So you can see um, I didn't do the bottom yet because we're going to have this one to even it out. Um, I dyed down to about there and I broke open the seam and I used a little token all on the inside and then I burnished the outside. So this is how I put these together and I don't make a ton of these. So I pulled this one out of the sketchbook from like 2012, I think, um, but I never really made them. So I know they're pretty popular and I know a lot of people make them. If you have a better way to assemble this, go for it. Um, what I'm gonna do is, this is how I do it though. I'm gonna make a little mark there below where this is gonna land and then I'm going to use the curves on the bottom to line this piece up so I know exactly where it's going to land. And on this side, I can do a little line kind of right underneath there. So now I know that i got to rough this up a little bit so that the glue will stick because this is a chrome tan leather. And we're going to glue one half in, punch it. Then we're going to use that as a guide to pre-punch the other half. Um, and then we'll glue it in just so that everything lines up. It's not so much a make the stitching look nice on either part half thing. It's just that when you have all these folds, I don't want to risk 
punching through the whole thing and getting things off kilter. So. So once our glue is dry to the touch and ready to be stuck together, I'm going to glue this carefully. So I'm going to glue it starting at this bottom corner here and use this bottom seam as kind of my north star to make sure everything lines up nicely. And we'll just tap this down lightly. Now, there is a full bend in this piece right here. And almost right here, not so much on this side. So you're going to want to make sure that if you're not using a leather that bends well, that you dampen this before you bend it, because you can crack different leathers. If you have like a really dry veg tan, and you try to make a bend like this, um, it'll crack. So luckily, chrome tan doesn't really crack like that. So we're good to go. There's just a little bit of the extra glue to rub off, but we'll hit that with a, some crepe afterwards, and we'll be good to go. I'm going to lay down some stitch lines and punch some of this before we glue work on this side because we're going to use those stitch lines to pre-punch this half before we glue it in. So we're only going to be sewing from here around the corner to here. And I made this so that you don't have to do any curved stitching on this side. It's just a straight line down and then over. It does have a little curve there, but the curve is not severe enough that we have to curve our stitching as well. We can just do a right angle. I'm going to start my stitching on this bottom corner. The two ends of this are open-ended, and we did that so that no matter what stitch uh, chisel spacing you're using, you don't really have to plan anything out. You can just kind of wing it, and um, every different type of spacing should work. So you can see I'm going to end right about there. Then I'm going to go this side, and I'm going to start right in that bottom corner as well. I'm going to take my tube prong and just plot out, this is usually only two th stitches if you're using maybe three millimeter spacing, we're using five here. If you're using three millimeter spacing or four, you might get three in there, but I'm just going to throw two in. Now, to get the spacing, to get the stitching on this piece, what we're going to do is we're going to run our stitch line. I'm going to fold it over and come over here. I'm going to line up my bottom seam, and all I'm going to do is transfer these lines, or these holes. So I really only need that hole right there. That's the hole that I need. And then if I punch, and we can pre-mark this out to make sure we're right, we land right in that corner, and then if we start from here and work our way down, We should be good to go. And we see that we end pretty much exactly on the same plane as the hole we've punched over there. So we're going to do that. And the reason we're doing this in general is because if we were to, if we were to glue this down here and then punch everything, it's very hard because we have a sp the spine of the fold, this folded piece. It's very hard to know that we're lined up short of sticking this out far enough that we could basically like, you know, tap it down and make sure it's lined up. And it doesn't really look good like that. You want, you want a little bit of spine sticking out there. It looks nice. So by pre-punching, we can get everything where we want it and make sure everything lines up. And we don't run the risk of one side looking nice while the other, the stitching is too far in from the seam or too close to the seam or anything like that. So to line all these up, once our glue is dry, I have three needles here. I have one in the top, one in the bottom corner, and then one on the far corner. I'm going to flip it over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure, without 
letting the glue touch itself on the other side, that I'm putting these needles through the correct holes. And that way, when we slowly lower it down, we'll know that all of our positioning is roughly correct. There we go. So, you can see now how we have everything. Oh, sorry. Just drop the camera. <laughs> and there's your face. <laughs> okay. So you can see now we have everything. We're going to just start lowering it into place. And we can check by taking out a needle here and putting it through there. And you see we have a perfect match on all of our holes. We're just going to do that on the same side here. There we go. So we have a little bit of sanding to do, but that's okay. And then once we pull this out, we're ready to sew. this piece is that once you're sewn up you really only have one little edge to finish that's just along the bottom here so I gave it a little sand and I'm just gonna edge it a little bit and then we'll dye it and varnish it and then we're done And here we go. So this is a very cool, slim design, but it still has a bit of design to it. It's, it's interesting. So you have your center section here, which because it's basically open on one side, it's very roomy. So you hold a few cards here. And then on either side, you have a quick, uh, quick draw pocket that you can put more cards in. So I did look it up. This is the Newbury Leather South Street Tannage in um, Cognac, and then this is the Oxblood. This is also all the Cognac. The wheat is much lighter. And then this is Valdebrana's Olive, and this is Dollaru navy I think um, so we will have the pattern is in a pack you get both of the designs I think it's like four bucks if you want to make along and other than that all of the materials are also linked in the description thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you in the next one